Field Marshal Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington, is one of Britain's most famous military commanders. He is regarded as one of the world's greatest ever defensive commanders. Although, as we will see, he could be aggressive and bold when the opportunity arose. He was adept at tactical, strategic and logistical planning, skilled at reading the typography of a battlefield and taking advantage of its features, and cool, calm and measured even in the heat of battle. Here we take a look at his five greatest victories in reverse order. Number five, the Battle of Baseco, following the British victory at Talavera in Spain in 1809, Wellington was forced to withdraw back into Portugal in the face of the superior numbers of the opposing French armies. Napoleon Bonaparte had ordered Marshal Massena to drive the British out of Portugal. Meanwhile, Wellington was constructing a defensive line of fortifications to help stop the French attacking the Portuguese capital, Lisbon, named the lines of Torres Vedras. On discovering that the French had entered Portugal, Wellington occupied the ridge at Passaco with British and Portuguese troops in an attempt to slow the French advance to allow the completion of his fortifications. Taking up a strong defensive position, he was able to place many of his troops on the reverse slope to help protect them from French artillery fire and making Messina uncertain as to his disposition and strength of his forces. To enable better communications and help deploy reinforcements quickly, Wellington had had a road built which ran the length of the reverse slope of the ridge. The French attacked the Anglo-Portuguese positions five times. However, after much fierce fighting, they failed to dislodge the Allied forces and were forced to withdraw. Anglo-Portuguese casualties were around 1,250, while French casualties were around 4,500. However, Wellington was forced to withdraw to the lines of Torres Vedras after his positions were outflanked by Messina's troops. Number 4. The Battle of Talavera Following their defeat at the Second Battle of Porto in May 1809, Marshal Soult's French army had retreated from Portugal back into northern Spain. Wellesley then advanced into Spain to join forces with the Spanish, commanded by General Custa, in an attack on the Spanish capital, Madrid. Meanwhile, the French, led by the Emperor's brother, Joseph, King of Spain, were determined to concentrate their forces to destroy the British army in the peninsula. On receiving the news that the Allied armies were advancing towards him, Joseph advanced down the Tagus Valley to confront them. The Spanish army encountered the advance guard of the concentrated French army and began to fall back towards Talavera, where Wellesley had suggested that they formed a combined defensive position. During the night of the 27th of July, Marshal Victor attempted to seize the strategically important Medellin Hill. However, General Roland Hill counterattacked, which repelled the French attack. The following morning began with a heavy French artillery bombardment, with Wellington again deploying troops on the reverse slope to help protect them. The French once again attacked the Medellin and were repelled by British volley fire to both their front and flanks. The French then launched a mass infantry attack against the British centre, which after some fierce fighting was checked by the British infantry with Wellington plugging any gaps with his reserve. Meanwhile, British and Spanish cavalry and horse artillery checked the French advance 
on their left flank. Victor then received incorrect information that Wellesley was attempting to outflank him on his right. This caused Victor to withdraw. Joseph then ordered a general withdrawal, bringing an end to the battle. British casualties were around 6,268, while Spanish casualties were around 1,200, with French casualties being around 7,389. After this battle, Wellesley was created by Count Wellington of Talavera. Number 3. The Battle of Salamanca In April 1812, following the successful siege of Badajoz, Wellington marched his army northwards to expel Marmont's French army from Portugal. On receiving the news that Wellington was advancing towards him, Marmont retreated into Spain towards Salamanca, with Wellington in pursuit. Wellington seized the town of Salamanca and its outlying forts in an attempt to force Marmont to combat. However, with no reaction from Marmont, Wellington advanced towards the French, hoping for an opportunity that would force them to battle. For several weeks, Wellington found his manoeuvres blocked by the French. However, when the French army started to receive a steady supply of reinforcements, Marmont deployed his army, attempting to turn Wellington's flank. With the two armies now marching parallel to each other, Wellington was considering withdrawing his army back into Portugal. Marmont believed that Wellington would not attack on ground not of his own choosing. When he observed dust clouds created by Wellington's baggage train, he believed that the whole Allied army was retreating. Marmont ordered three divisions to quickly move westwards to cut off their escape. When Wellington observed this manoeuvre, resulting in the French separating their left flank from their main body, Wellington ordered an immediate attack by Lord General Pakenham's 3rd Division, which surprised and routed the overextended French left wing. Early in the battle, both Marmont and his second in command, General Bonnet, were injured, resulting in the French command passing to General Casale. Casale launched a counter-attack against the Allied centre, which was countered by Allied reinforcements deployed by Wellington. After stubborn French resistance, their line broke and their beaten army retreated. British casualties were around 3,129, while Portuguese casualties were around 2,038. The Spanish army took no part in the battle. French casualties were around 6,000, with 7,000 taken prisoner. The Battle of Salamanca was a heavy defeat for the French, with five of their eight divisions badly mauled. The Allied army entered the Spanish capital, Madrid, on August the 6th. Number five, the Battle of Baseco. Following the British victory at Talavera in Spain in 1809, Wellington was forced to withdraw back into Portugal in the face of the superior numbers of the opposing French armies. Napoleon Bonaparte had ordered Marshal Massena to drive the British out of Portugal. Meanwhile, Wellington was constructing a defensive line of fortifications to help stop the French attacking the Portuguese capital, Lisbon, named the Lines of Torres Vedras. On discovering that the French had entered Portugal, Wellington occupied the ridge at Basaco with British and Portuguese troops in an attempt to slow the French advance to allow the completion of his fortifications. Taking up a strong defensive position, he was able to place many of his troops on the reverse slope to help protect them 
from French artillery fire and making Messina uncertain as to his disposition and strength of his forces. To enable better communications and help deploy reinforcements quickly, Wellington had had a road built which ran the length of the reverse slope of the ridge. The French attacked the Anglo-Portuguese positions five times. However, after much fierce fighting, they failed to dislodge the Allied forces and were forced to withdraw. Anglo-Portuguese casualties were around 1,250, while French casualties were around 4,500. However, Wellington was forced to withdraw to the lines of Torres Vedras after his positions were outflanked by Messina's troops. Number 1. The Battle of Waterloo. Following Napoleon's return to power in March 1815, after his exile on the island of Elba, many countries, including Russia, Austria, Prussia and Britain, formed the Seventh Coalition to oppose him and began to mobilise their armies. With the Anglo-Allied and Prussian armies already deployed in Belgium, Napoleon planned to quickly attack each of these armies separately before they could form a part of a coordinated invasion of France. On the 16th of June, Napoleon successfully attacked the Prussian army at the Battle of Lingi, causing them to withdraw northwards. However, they were in good order and marching parallel with and not away from Wellington's forces. Napoleon dispatched a third of his army to pursue the Prussians, to ensure that they did not join forces with the Anglo-Allied army. The pursuing French army engaged the Russian rearguard at the Battle of Valve on the 18th and 19th of June. Meanwhile, on the 16th of June, a portion of the French army confronted the Anglo-Allied army at the Battle of Quatrebras. On receiving the news of the Prussian withdrawal, and that they were still able to support him. Wellington withdrew northwards towards Brussels on the 17th of June to a ridge that he had previously surveyed at Mount Saint-Jean across the Brussels road near the village of Waterloo. Here, with the aid of the fortified farm buildings of Hougoumont and Hele Saint, the Anglo-Allied army repelled repeated French attacks throughout the afternoon of the 18th of June. Although their forces were being gradually worn down, they were increasingly reinforced by the Prussian army arriving on the French right flank. In a final attempt to break the Anglo-Allied line, Napoleon committed the infantry battalions of the old Imperial Guard. However, with the Prussians arriving on the battlefield in increasing numbers, and Anglo-Allied musket volley fire breaking the attack of the Imperial Guard, the French army was routed. Anglo-Allied casualties were around 15,000, while the Prussians suffered around 7,000 casualties. French casualties were between 24,000 and 26,000, including six to 7,000 captured. The battle marked the end of the Napoleonic Wars. 
with Napoleon announcing his second abdication on the 24th of June. He was exiled to the island of St Helena where he died in May 1821.